If all the white farmers were removed from the world today, the majority of poor Africans would starve and food prices would skyrocket due to food shortages. So if the white farmers leave, we'd be fine in SA? If the white farmers leave, we, then we are going to enter civil war. Hmm. Because people are going to come into your house to get food. The hungry will eat the rich. So I'm going to eat soul. If you're hungry, you will eat soul. You look we'll finish yummy. me, dog. <laughs> you'll know where to start, boy. You'll, you'll, you'll finish me, man. <laughs> no, that that's crazy. crazy. Yeah, that's the quickest way you can... And that's nothing else that can make this country, like, uh, uh, it's hurting people here. But the quickest we can get to a very abnormal situation is for people not to have food, OK? This is why our government is making efforts to have these 350 grants, and we don't like them as taxpayers. But let the people go hungry, mm. then you will see. And we are very close, mm. very close, very close. The poverty in this country is real, and uh, people don't have the skill to grow their own food. The Westerners do not just farm the land, they are leaders in scientific and technological research, as well as invention of ways and means to produce more and more. Failure to understand tiny details like these is why Africans fail to rise out of poverty and underdevelopment that haunt us today. This is Citizen Concerned reminding you to beware of the comrades. Citizen Concerned talks about what matters. If you think what we do is valuable, please subscribe, like, and share these videos for the benefit of all our people. Let's get our land and let's work our land. I'm hated for that. What? What? Where? I mean, uh, uh, I, I don't. I, I. I. I don't know what's going to happen in the future. I'm saying to you, we've not called for the killing of white people at least for now. I can't That's, guarantee the future. Yeah, but I mean, you'd understand somebody watching that, especially as it gets shared on Twitter, they freak out. Ah, it sounds like a genocidal ah, call. Ah, ah, cry babies. Cry babies. I'm not calling for the slaughter of white people, at least for now. The, I, we, I can't give a guarantee of the future. We have already started taking the land. If you vote against this, it's a waste of time. We are already giving our people the land and we are not ashamed of that. People of South Africa, where you see a beautiful land, take it, it belongs to you. South Africa has experts in farming and those experts are currently white farmers. Through unity and mutually beneficial relationships, black people can become experts in farming too, but they must learn from the experts first. It's beautiful to see that some black people have already started on this learning journey. Remove the expert and chaos begins. ESCOM comes to mind immediately. How many technicians and engineers were replaced by inexperienced BEE hires? The African countries that produce the most food through commercial farming are the ones with white farmers. South Africa is at the top of that list and no country comes close. All other countries with all the land in the hands of black people get their food primarily through subsistence farming or imports and donations from other countries. While Malema wants to be like Mugabe acting all brave, as we the black masses cheer him on in ignorance, remember that he will not suffer like you and I if the EFF gives all the land to black citizens. The American and European brands we have come to love and make a part of our lives leave the country. The more than 600 American-owned companies operating in South Africa will all vanish. McDonald's, KFC, Ford, Uber, Microsoft, Amazon, Apple, LinkedIn, Coca-Cola, Kodak, Pepsi, IBM, Levi's, and many more will be a memory a part of South African history. There are other hundreds more from European countries like BMW, Mercedes, uh, Range Rover, Jaguar, and hundreds more. Millions of jobs gone. And I know that this may seem extreme, but remember, it has already happened in Zimbabwe, not so far from us. Zimbabwe has recently been allowing farmers to come back to farm once again. 
and instead of no compensation, the government has promised to pay more than $3 billion in compensation to the white farmers whose farms were seized by Mugabe. That is because the Zimbabwean government has felt the pinch. The economic damage that occurred due to the seizures of farms in Zimbabwe is a main reason why Zimbabweans are now all over the world. They're not here because they like South Africa. They are here because there are few jobs in their own country. These brands you and I take for granted here are virtually non-existent in Zimbabwe. All right, let me tell you a quick story. Up here used to be one of the busiest uh, movie theaters in the country when it opened back in those days, the late 90s, 98, 97, yeah, 97, 98, 99, 2000. It was popping over here 20 years ago. It was the, the place to be, okay? Westgate was the place to be. So things have changed a little bit. The economy has hit hard and you can see the impact. Malema makes it seem like if the EFF nationalizes the farms, then all black people will become rich through agriculture. But have you really thought about what that really means? The land used for commercial farming in South Africa is about 46,400,000 hectares. If EFF takes that and gives it to the 49 million citizens of South Africa equally, they each get 0.9 hectares. That is not even enough land for subsistence farming wherein a farmer grows enough to feed their own family only and it's certainly not enough to sell commercially. To make matters worse, less than half of all that land is suitable for growing crops. The vast majority of the land that is available is only suitable for animals to roam and find food on their own. Take into account droughts, laziness, lack of knowledge, lack of experience, lack of machinery, and you have what? A recipe for disaster. You cannot feed a nation by milking cows using fingers, Julius. The infrastructure needed to feed a nation is not something you can get in just a year or even 10 years. The majority of these farmers even know how to repair their own diesel engines, their irrigation systems, and they know stuff that a degree in horticulture will never ever teach you. And tell me this, why would they give that knowledge to you when you have taken the farms away from them? Why? An EFF as greedy as they are will seize the priciest and biggest commercial farms and own them individually, like for themselves. Don't be surprised by that statement. This has happened before. Mugabe and his comrades in Zimbabwe did it. Russia does it with their tycoons. Don't you know the standard of any communist regime? All animals are equal, but some animals are more equal than others. So best believe that some people will benefit more than others. South African leaders, along with the vast majority of African leaders, have not yet developed the mindset and work ethic essential for the continent to rise from its slumber. The South African government already owns more than 6,000 farms right here in South Africa. In neighboring Zimbabwe, the government used violence to seize land. But here in South Africa, the government buys farms on the open market, giving grants to non-whites who then work them. The problem is it's expensive and many new owners just don't have the skill or experience to make it work. Many farms become unproductive and they fail. In fact, some have had to be sold back to white farmers. It's a slow process. The government had hoped to have redistributed a third of white-owned land by 2014. That's not going to happen. But now politicians are talking about speeding it up. Based on the potential of these farms, they are capable of employing 60,000 people. But currently, they only employ a little less than 20,000 people. That's more than 40,000 jobs lost because the government has purchased previously white-owned farms and given them to black people. 
more than half of the people that were given those farms have not even reported on much progress on these farms. Only 7% were reported to be doing well, though with some limitations, they have already started resorting to subsistence farming. Already. More than half of the farms had already started getting degraded, just like a lot of the things that are under black management. Poor management, lack of maintenance and lack of experience. What comes to mind? ESCOM, the post office, roads, transnet. The farming is not complicated. Uh, you guys just make it complicated. Uh, uh, our people are the ones who are working on those farms. Uh, uh, and they are the ones that are producing uh, this food you are talking about. They may not own it, but they are producing it. And therefore, it means they've got a skill to produce. <laughs> You serious? Entitlement, anger, slothfulness, corruption, greed and ignorance still cloud the comrades as they mainly focus on propaganda that victimizes the blacks and vilifies the whites in their countries. Read a book, know about your future through history and understand the politics and the economics that led us here. Change your culture, change your work ethic, and maybe, just maybe, South Africa may become a global enterprise. This is Citizen Concerned, and you've been warned, beware of the comrades.